Hey everyone, um, I'm going to just give a little introduction as um, people are jumping into our first Common Ground Community Forum. So we'd like to continue this uh, tradition of creating these... Hi Carly. Uh, we'd like to continue these traditions of um, having these little half hour to hour long community sessions where we get to talk to different uh, tap dancers about certain topics relating to tap dancing. And today we're going to be talking with Shelby Kaufman about tap floors and also about Miller and Benz. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> oh, Shelby's trying to find where to request. Okay, Shelby, at uh, the um, bottom, bottom right, I believe, or or top right, sorry, my interface is a little different. I can just uh, send you what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Hopefully you'll see that pop up. There you are. I think it worked, yay. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Justin? I'm really good, it's so nice to see you. Nice to see you. It's nice that social media keeps us connected right now. <clears throat> It's true. Yes, yes, it does. In in ways that I think we never thought it would. You know, like truly, yes, absolutely. Um, but mm -hmm. I I am uh, just want to give a little introduction about you. Um, I mean, you you have been in the tap community for um, for quite some time, and and I really um, met you through Jermaine Salzberg and that yeah. kind of crew of people. And uh, you presented choreography for uh, an event that I've done, and um, We've tap danced together. We've there's just we've really just always been uh, crossing paths, and I yes. continually go onto your YouTube page, which is just chock full of information. I put uh, the link to that in our link in bio on our Common Ground Instagram page. Thank you. you I there's so many that. things you 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 have you do like tap tutorials. You do reviews on shoes. Uh, you talk, we, one of them I watched, um, and while we're here, is you did a, a review on some tap floors. Um, so I encourage everybody to check out what you do online. Thank you. That's so nice of you. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so, I also, yeah, I go ahead. appreciate everything you're doing as well. So, oh, thank <laughs> like, you. Yeah. I love that you're well, putting classes out right now and doing things like this. I mean, you're, you're doing an incredible job of keeping the community together right now. Thank you. I, that means a lot. We're just we're all doing our part, you know, and, and uh, you being here is is helping that. So uh, since we have limited time, I want to just dive right in. I have a slew of questions from people. But first, I wanted to you to just jump off, uh, jump in by talking about the two tap floors that you reviewed on YouTube and just giving sure. us a little sense of what those were. Yeah. So um, so it's funny, actually, because I only I've been back and forth between New York and my parents home where I grew up in Michigan. And so I've never used both boards in the same room which is odd, but I still think I've done enough um, Zoom teaching to have my opinion about them. So um, the two boards that I reviewed were the Omara. Well, so specifically, my review was about travel tap boards. So in this room behind me, and I'll, I'll move my phone around so you can see what I'm talking about. But in the room that I'm in in Michigan, I have the Omara Extra Large Travel Board, which is, uh, I believe it's a 34 inch by 34 inch board. So just under three by three. And then on the other side of me, which I'll show you also, is my stationary three by four Omara board. And so I kind of stick them next to each other and act like they're one board, even though they don't actually connect together on purpose. Cool. Um, and then in New York, I have a fast foot board, which is a little bit smaller than my travel board here. It's, I think it's a 27 by 35. So it's just under two feet by just under three feet. Um, and so I'm sorry, just over two by just under three. And so... Um, those, um, that board is a little bit more of a rectangle versus the square that I have in here. Um, so if we're talking about what board I like to dance on more, just if I were, you know, going hard and doing my, you know, craziest choreography, I would probably say that I prefer my Omara only because it's better sprung and I have a lot of joint issues and all sorts of things, just genetically slash being a tap dancer for a living. Um, 
So for joints, I definitely recommend the Omara. And both, by the way, both of them start out slippery. And if you get one and you're nervous about that, they will like get less slippery as you break them in and tap on them. So yeah. don't Thanks feel saying that about a that. A lot of people kind of have that immediate response to a no, new I was, form. Too. I was like, like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm ice skating. So actually, I think I was first introduced to Omara flooring at Motor City Tap Festival, where I've been on faculty for eight years. And Denise Caston, who puts it on, always puts um, Omara flooring out for all the classrooms, whether it was at first at Wayne State University's campus, she like laid them on top of their floor. And then now it's at her studio, Tap Dance Detroit, which is completely floored with Omara floors. And so I knew that that was a brand I really um, trusted before I was having to sort of buy my own. And so that was part of my decision making is knowing that I enjoyed tapping on those and that all of our, um, some of our shows, they'd actually laid those floors down. And so that's what we had tapped on in performance and I, I knew that I really loved the feel of them. Um, and then also they're based in Flint, Michigan, which is where my dad's from and only an hour from here. So I got my board faster than everyone else during this <laughs> pandemic and I was appreciative <laughs> of that. That's um, awesome. And then my fast foot board, I actually, you know, see, since we were fast foot without a T, I'm sorry I said that wrong, but fast foot. So no T between the fast and the foot. Um, but actually we were just talking about how Justin and I danced for Jermaine Salzberg a bit together. So I've been in her company for 13 years. Um, you know, we are incredibly close. I've danced with her forever. And Justin has come in and done some pieces with us. So the piece I'm referring to, Justin actually was not a part of, but we were um, doing a performance on a floor that we were not allowed to tap on. And we decided we wanted to do this particular show anyway. And so Jermaine bought a bunch of fast foot boards to connect and we actually kept reconfiguring the boards into different shapes and different ways on the stage and we danced on those on the stage and so that was how i first learned about fast foot boards so um i bought one of those many years ago and have had that in my new york apartment the whole time i just really underutilized it because we weren't in the midst of this pandemic until i went back and then started teaching there and what i would say about a fast foot um like i said i prefer an omar if i'm just talking about what I like to dance on. But there are many different reasons why I would say to get a fast foot over an Omara. And they are, number one, if you're in an apartment and you have neighbors, because Omara's, the way it's sprung makes it so loud. <laughs> like, like shockingly, like bone shockingly loud, especially yeah. in mind. I think that's as we like to problem, say, it's very live. It's a very live. Very, which is an amazing perk. Yeah. In certain circumstances. And right. And really, if you want like a gorgeous sound quality, you get that from this little tap board. I mean, you've got a, it's like, you know, buying, you know, the best violin on the market, except of course, we're lucky that these are not millions of dollars. But, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's our instrument and it's a gorgeous instrument. But like anything else, you know, this gorgeous instrument is not going to be appreciated by neighbors in a place like Manhattan. So um, I've definitely been very grateful that my, what I've had in the city is my fast foot. Um, because I don't think that my neighbors would have been as accepting of my job um, if I had been on an Omara in my apartment. And then um, the other thing I would say is that um, the Omara is really heavy and really like bulky to carry around. Like it's like, it takes, it's, it's weighted. Whereas I can like throw my fast foot around above my head. Like I can tap and then if someone needs to see something in like a, without my tap, just on, I can literally just like fold it up and throw it against the wall. I can't do that with this board because it's such a um, more serious, like heavier thing. So to me, they're both extremely beneficial boards, but like, I love that I have both because I use them for different reasons. You know? So you would say that the fast foot board really is good for being in an apartment where you have uh, neighbors who are not thrilled about you being a tap dancer, yes. keeping it quiet, kind of keeping the sound a little more muffled. And the Omara is definitely more of a live floor. Uh, would you say that both uh, are equally as slippery when you first get them? Or did you find that one was less slippery than another? I actually think they're both pretty slippery. Um, something I talk about in my review, which so if you look at that, you'll get more information on this. But that you know, they're because they're portable, they fold both of them. And right. so um, when they unfold, they kind of unfold differently than one another. And I find that my Omara lies like exactly flat, even though you can see the crease and that I can dance like through that without taking notice of that. I feel like they, because I think they're both kind of similarly slippery, I think I notice on a fast foot where those creases are a little bit more. And that is something that I'm sort of learning to navigate. 
Yes. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's still a beautiful board. It's just that I feel where those creases are. And so like, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, shuffle into a crease because I'll, I'll get my toe a little bit stuck on that one. Right. And so for me, the slip effect, I felt more maybe on the fast foot only because of where the creases are. And I was navigating that than on an Omara. Now, I think that I have the Omar that you were talking about. This was the, the one that, yeah. The one that is just... that the extra large or is that the regular? No, size? this is not. This is not the extra large. So you guys, that's amazing because actually I was just going to say like the biggest difference between their two travel boards is size. And Justin's got the small one here. Should I try to lift the big one for you? Yeah. Let's see if I can do it. So this guy just unfolds like this and then it just goes into the creases and it becomes just one lovely uh. time. All right, so this is this is the other size of the exact same board that Justin's holding up. I don't know if you guys can see it, but right. and then it unfolds the same way as his does. So this one, like I said, is just under a three by three. Right. Yeah. And my mine is um I think mine is like two by two ish. I did not get the um coating on it. Which Neither I did looked, I, and I was yeah. debating if I should have. Yeah, I, I, I did not get it. And I actually also got the raw floor. So this, if you see, it's actually the raw version of the floor, which at first I got because I had heard that things were so slippery. And then I have to say, I kind of wish that I had gotten the maple because... Um, oh, it's, you didn't even it, get the maple. I no, I didn't even get the maple. I got the raw. It's a little harder to clean. And it actually kind of got tacky as I tap dance on it more and more. Whereas I think the ma the maple uh, would not have gotten that tacky, you know. The so, maple is beautiful, but I actually think that Denise told me that the board that she had at Motor City that I loved at first wasn't a maple, and I just assumed it was. So, um, so I got the maple thinking I was going to have the same flooring, and it isn't. So actually, I think you could probably be okay. I, I know they have an ash and a birch. Do you know if you got one or the other of those? I think I got the ash because I think it's, I think that's like the, the most, like the, the most raw version of it. Interesting. Um, so mine feels raw. Like, you know how his has divots in it? Mine does too. Like you can feel all of my like tap marks in it um, because I didn't get that like enamel on top the of it. The enamel, right. That's the other upgrade to do. And like, I think just I the, didn't even, it wasn't yeah. on my radar to do that. Was it on yours? No, not at all. And and yeah. I, you know, I've heard people say it's not completely necessary, but it definitely helps clean the board easier. That's the one thing I've heard is that if you have a Mr. Clean, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, the magic erasers, though, really do work. Like, that's a the magic great eraser is the board. way to clean really any professional tap board, um, especially one that has a coating on it. You know, and I think just to kind of um, uh, pigeon tail off of what you were saying, you know, the Omar, the Omara is an investment. And I think that anyone who's thinking about a, um, an Omara, which their website is sprungfloors.com, sprungfloors.com. And if you are, you know, really thinking about that, you, you are going to be spending, you know, anywhere from like 180 to $400 on the floor, depending on what size and all of the extra add-ons that you'd like well, to get. Well, a fast foot's up there too, though. A fast foot's, I think, and it is. 200 yeah. It is, yeah. You're absolutely right. So I think right. both of these choices are if you're going to put money into a tap board. Like either mm -hmm. one, you know? Yes. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say, though, is that um, you can get Omara boards that are not travel, like that don't fold and have a um, handle that actually connect and you can make one large floor out of them. But if you want to make a large floor out of something that does travel, then you have to do fast foot. Because the actual fast foot boards that do have a handle and unfold also can connect with one another to create a large floor. So if you like, like what Jermaine did for her company, if you have to create basically a stage and you want it to be easy to transport over there and easy to quickly configure, then I right. would say fast foot. Yeah, I would say um, for me, cause I, when I got back to New York after our travel, I bought a three by four Omara that is not full. Oh yeah, that's what I have right here yep. too. Yeah, yeah, you have the same fancy. I thought that's what you had said, yep. And so I got that because, um, the, the one thing I will say is I do plan to travel with this floor again in my car, though. It's not a floor that you can, like, bring on the subway or or anything like that. It's, it's right. nice because it's three by four, which I, I like. I like that extra room. So it's it's to me, it was worth it. But um, definitely more of a floor that you can travel with if you're, like, putting it in a car or a or a, or a large taxi van or something like that, you know. Um, They're asking how much the three by four board was, and I, I'm trying to remember. Do you remember how much it was? It was three something, right? Yeah, I think mine was like three 
20 or something like that. Yeah. Um, but if you go into sprungfloors.com, the, the one that we both have. Oh, something else to show you guys actually yeah. while I'm in this room with this is in the travel board world, they also come, you have to buy them when they're like over $100, but they also come with these huge um, oh, travel yeah. bags that you actually, travel bag. yes. you actually have a space here for the handle. And yeah. you know how we were talking about how tap boards get really dirty? Is um, that's like a way to like walk around with it and like let it touch like your clothes without getting taps and all over it too. Yeah, because it does they get. Do that it is dirty. Like if you if it touches your clothes or something, you know, in the car, You're, you don't even yeah. want to like put your hand on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to quickly talk a little bit about because um, a lot of people asked about making a board. What kind of floor you would? What kind of wood you would use to make your own? And then also what you would put underneath it. So. I, I wanted, I was going to just kick it off. And then if you want to just kind of, yeah. yeah, pigeon tail off of me. Um, so what I find is the problem with people making their own tap board is that they assume if they just get a piece of plywood and put it down, especially on a flat surface, not a carpet, but like a hardwood floor. Uh, number one, there is the danger of it scratching your floor because there's nothing underneath it. So you've probably seen a lot of people online putting blankets underneath it or a comforter or something to kind of help it not do that. And then number two, a lot of times this plywood, especially thinner plywood will bow, right? So you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna leave it alone maybe in your, even in your house, if there's heat or air conditioning on, it can make the wood slightly bend. So then you go to tap on it again and you kind of have this concave Thank floor you. that no longer is flat. So I have these three things that I, I just, We'll, we'll bring up and then Shelby, you probably will have other things to say. But number one, if you are gonna just do a piece of plywood, like go to Home Depot and get something, do get something a little thicker, right? Definitely thicker, than, you know, a quarter inch or thicker um, because the weight will help it not bow. And I always recommend if it's possible, I know it's harder to lay it flat, but to lay it flat, stick it under your bed and let it lay flat. Don't sit it up straight because that's when it starts to bow. Um, or Interesting. Put, yeah, or, or lay it down and, and put things on it um, so that it doesn't do that. Uh, number two, if you want to be crafty and, and um, you have some time, you can simply take a yoga mat or you could even purchase those uh, yoga puzzle mats. You know how they like kind of fit together? And I've yeah, seen a yeah, lot like what you do for like a baby. Like a right, exactly. Yep. The <laughs> that have like the ABCs on them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can just take those and buy some spray adhesive at a, um, at, at a Home Depot or something. And you can actually glue it onto the wood. Um, and then you have now this, this nice padding underneath that um, is not going to shift while you're tapping on it. And it's also not gonna scrape uh, the floor. Um, and then you can also, if you ha like are handy and, and, and can, or know someone who can cut wood for you and help you, you can cut one by threes. So just small little beams that you're then going to place on the bottom of the, of the floor of the plywood. And you don't even need to nail or screw anything. And you could literally take wood glue and put it all the way down the one by three. And you're basically just making strips right down your floor and you're going to glue it on and you're going to flip it over and probably put something on it so that glue sets and dries. And then if you want to, what I did recently was I cut a yoga mat to fit perfectly on those one by threes. And I just glued that also with wood glue onto those one by three slats. So it didn't move or, or shift or scrape my floor. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, so you're the, definitely so, much craftier than I am. <laughs> well, you know, it's also about the, the, the amount of time and having ADD definitely does, definitely makes you go, what can I do today? Um, but I found that that was really helpful. And also too, just really quick, these things are readily available from like a Home Depot. And you could also do something like this. That's where you just get done. these foam discs. Yep, and just you can just glue those all around the floor. And then that way you've got a little spring and you've got a little space between the floor and your floor and it, and it, um, it helps. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, is if you look at the bottom of an Omara, um, which Justin and I were kind of showing you a second ago, it's just literally like thick foam pieces that are keeping the floor from the, the tap floor from the floor. And, yeah. you know, it's not that you couldn't do that yourself if you wanted to with a beautiful piece of wood. And you just have to, you know, get the right density foam, I would say. 
and exactly. and you know make sure it's evenly spaced out like Justin was saying so it doesn't bow in weird spots and then and then you right. really have something similar handmade. yeah exactly and you but you're so right you don't want to you don't want to step on your floor and feel it give too much you know that right. you need to put more of those dots or as I said, I think I think the slats are really great. So if that's you, actually a really cool idea. I never would have thought to do it in like straight lines like that. But that's yeah, like, just straight really lines cool. right across the bottom of it, and basically, I mean, it's yeah. like it's like building a it's like building a flat in theater. You know, that's how that's why I yeah, thought. I've of seen it. so much creative stuff happening lately. I mean, even my students have been getting really creative. Like um, I, I say this in my in my video, but I there's three that have stood out to me of just like people being really creative. One is Philip Atmore, who, if you guys don't know who he is, definitely check him out. He's an incredible tap dancer friend of mine. And he was tapping on a cutting board. He found a wood cutting board that was big enough that he could, you know, tap enough on until he got his board in. And he was dancing literally on a wood cutting board, which I think is hilarious. And then I had students finding signs in their, in their garages and just putting those signs, like maybe on top of a blanket, like Justin was saying, and tapping on those. Like they say like, you know, no trespassing, or this is a happy home or whatever. And people are dancing on just really funny stuff. I saw a girl dancing on a, a clipboard. One of my students dances on like a large, an oversized clipboard that actually is like, I don't know, some sort of gag thing that people, I don't know what she actually is supposed to use it for, but <laughs> she's dancing. I mean, yeah, it's like, looks like a- It was it like for like a, a production of your good man, actually, Charlie Brown. <laughs> well, it's really, yeah, people are so creative these days. I think it's pretty amazing what people have figured out how to do in this uh, time frame when we're all sort of dancing at home. And also, I think it has to do with also like the way we choreograph and the way we teach is, you know, no one's really going across the floor anymore. We Everyone's sort of focusing on stationary exercises and so we can still like better ourselves in a limited space. And I just think everyone's really gotten extremely um, crafty and intelligent and problem solving. And, you know, it's it's amazing, I think, what everyone has done in this in this time. And I also think that now that we have Zoom, now that we have, you know, professional boards at home and all these things, I really think that we can utilize it in a different way, even when the pandemic's over. Like, I think it's, I think some doors have opened for us. You know, if someone wants a competition solo from a choreographer who is not planning to come to their state, they can do it through Zoom. I mean, it is pretty amazing what we're capable of doing. I mean, I've been teaching some of my um, old students that are now in college from their dorms on Zoom, and we can continue to do so even if there isn't a pandemic, you know? Yep. I just think it's pretty amazing what doors have opened from all of this, you know? Absolutely. I wanted to answer a question that um, that Sarah Broadman uh, wrote in. She was asking, should you coat this piece of plywood with anything? Um, I, I'm going to suggest no, just because I have just found as, a, as an amateur, I have no idea what is the right thing you know i've i've as a producer we've had those moments where the floor was slippery and we've done things like we we will wash it with a little bit of sprite in the water and yeah. try to do things like that but um i would just suggest if you're using a piece of plywood just beat the crap out of it you know just go ahead and, and beat the crap out of it i think trying to put a coating on it um, unless you know somebody who can like professionally do that for you may actually defeat the purpose of it. You may find it's tacky. Yeah, I think so too. And I also, um, the board in the back, I, I think you can see it from here, is just literally some, a piece of plywood that um, was cut for me at my camp like in 2006, which is ridiculous that I still have it. But um, there's absolutely nothing on this. And I actually find it to feel nice to tap on. Like, I don't think it's, I, I would say, um, you know, people use masonite sometimes. I would say that that is really slippery and I would not recommend like using masonite unless unless you have to for some reason. But it's, it's for something like that, you might want to get creative. But I think as long as it's like a piece of wood, you should just, and you know how Justin said beat the crap out of it? Not only that, beat the crap out of the edges because I find that people always dance in the middle of a space and then right when you like get to the outskirts is where you like find yourself slipping. So like, I would say be very conscious of purposely tapping like in every little crevice of your board so that it equally becomes yeah. less slippery. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And I, I saw some people saying that they tried painting their board and it came off on their shoe. Yeah, I just think like if, you know, un unless you're trying to do something, you're trying to really make it pretty for a video or something like that, or, you know, then if you are gonna paint it and just like not even coat it, but just paint it, I would say, uh, Paint it with something matte, not gloss or semi-gloss. Even though semi-gloss and gloss is easier to clean, 
At that point, I think if you just use a matte finish and you paint it, it's just going to be less slippery and, and it'll just be a little easier and may not get on your shoe as much. But I, I would recommend matte, you know, a matte paint um, that always helped us for our tap shows when we would bring in a masonite floor. We always painted it with matte. And it, yeah, and, and, it, I, and it you helps. know, there's also like little weird tricks. Like, um, I don't know if you've ever done this, Justin, but like, you know, duct taping your taps. <laughs> Yes. Like if something's that slippery, like until you're used to it or whatever, you literally take duct tape and stick it on your tap. Yes. Um, I do not think hairspray works. I actually think it has the adverse effect, even though people say hairspray. But I do not like that is not my personal recommendation. Um, Thank, but, same here. Yeah, you know, I've heard that one a lot. Yeah, a little a little Coca Cola on the floor, let it get tacky, rub your tap in it, and then go on stage. That that I've done that before. Yeah, gaff tape. You know, the problem with right, that yeah, stuff is just that. People get really creative about that. Yeah, things. the problem with that is just that you got to be ready for your shoes to get a little messed up because the residue is going to yeah, start to um, come off. So if you got Yeah, got I would say alcohol swab, though, tends to take that off if you... If you uh, what's that? What's that, Shelby? What'd you say? Oh, I was saying if you, if you have residue on the bottom, if you take just like an alcohol pad, it usually gets the rest of the like stuff off. Cool. I'm oh, not sure. Awesome. Exactly. Don't quote me on the fact that that's like good for taps. I, it might be, I, but it's probably it's better, better than, than having the residue if you have to do a show or something. It's probably better than Goo Gone. Let's right, say that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. Okay. I um, I want to just I want to have enough time to talk about some shoes because we you and I were talking about some of our favorite shoes and and I think we both kind of agree that Miller and Benz tend to be the shoes that we both individually like. They're my personal favorite. Your personal favorite. So uh, why don't you t uh, tell us about, you had mentioned two shoes to me. Tell me about the I, two shoes of Miller and Benz that you like the okay. most. So I only have one of them here because like I said, I'm in Michigan and my like tap shoe collection is in New York. Um, but the two that I like the best personally, and I, I, I really go into detail about all this on my YouTube channel because like I said, I have a lot of joint problems, foot problems. I feel like I have so many like different little weird ailments that I can kind of tell everybody who has like one of those things, what would be best for them. Just, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I might as well, you know, take one for the team and help out. But um, so this right here is um, my jazz tap master. Hey. And I really like these ones a lot. And you know, it's interesting because that's so say, crazy. Oh my gosh, Justin, <laughs> we're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you guys, that's really weird because like usually people get this with the black sole and we both decided to get it with wood and left black shoelaces. That's I know. Really, okay, obviously we're about to do a duet at some point with these shoes. Like obviously. <laughs> that goes without saying. But um, so these are my jazz tap masters. And the thing I really like about these, and I know people, some people say, well, isn't this a bad thing? And to me, it's a great thing is that it's thick right here. Mm -hmm. um, so, so. In a Miller and Benz shoe, specifically, if we're just talking about Miller and Benz, like comparing one flat model to the other, um, there's a double build here and here and here in a Jazz Tap Master. Sport Taps, which are my other favorite, have the double build, the double build, but then only a single build in the middle. And then the Triple Threats have a single build in the middle, but like a triple build on the two sides. So for me personally, and I know people that like, live and die for triple threats but for me that's not where I like the weight of a shoe to be just for me personally so I prefer jazz tap masters and sport taps those are my favorite too um but I love how thick it is under here I don't think it gives me any less mobility I don't think it hinders me in any way I just think it gives me the support under my foot that I like wish every tap shoe had so I love them for that and um I need arch support. Oh, by the way, every tap shoe that I wear in Miller and Ben, um, just so that you have the whole picture, I actually put Birkenstock arch supports in all of my tap shoes. And so everything that I say that I feel in a shoe, just assume that that includes a Birkenstock arch support in it because I just love those and I love that they fit in tap shoes. Um, but I think that the support that this gives like as a shoe is so good. And by the way, speaking of like weird tap floors and Jermaine Salzberg's company, um, th the reason I learned that Miller and Benz were my favorite by far is that I had, we had done this like show annually where we went every year and did the same show. And it was on this very like rubbery Marley, but also not sprung stage. And I used to just know going in after my first time that it would send shocks up my legs. Every time I did something hard, I got a shock like up my calf into my leg. And I had never experienced that before. And I noticed that I, it was happening to me every year on that stage. And so I just chalked it up to the stage. And I was like in pain while I was dancing, you know, just having to pretend I was enjoying myself and pretend to be in the moment when I indeed 
was not. Mm -hmm. And the first time I got a Miller and Ben pair of shoes and I danced with those shoes on that stage was the first time that that didn't happen. You didn't feel that. And I was like, oh, light bulb. I need shoes that are fit <laughs> I will, supportive. I will agree with you. And I yeah. learned my lesson the hard way. I will agree with you. I think that for me, they are... I haven't tried every shoe. You have you you have a lot of reviews, so I really recommend. I do, but I, there's a few brands that I haven't gotten. Right? Yeah, we don't, we haven't had a chance to, to try everything yet, and and but I I will say that these are the these are the most supportive. What I like about the Jazz Tap Master is exactly what you said that it has the double sole here. That makes people feel like they're tapping in surfboards at first. I know that a lot of people say that they have a hard time breaking in the shoe. Yeah. I just, I like just think that you you got you just got to get in them and walk around your carpet on four starch, you know, releve and just you know you gotta you gotta work that shoe a little bit. And you can play with it with your hands too. Like yes, you, absolutely. You can definitely do stuff like that. Yeah. I will say, and I'm just I'm just gonna throw this out there because I I've had many pairs of Miller and Benz. Now I know that we both did not get the crown treatment because you can't with the you can't with the with, with the, the beaten beat blue. Colors. Yeah. I will say, I only get Jazz Tap Masters, though I had a pair of Sport Taps and I loved them. I love them. One of my favorite shoes. Sport Tap, one of my favorite shoes. In um, a second, I'll tell you what I like better about each. If that's yeah. Um, so now this is the one with the crowning, you know. Um, the order. Royal, it's called Royal. The Royal, you thank you. Royal. The crowning, it's called Royal. Thank you. Um, I do find that when you get that treatment, I do find that the shoe does slightly break in faster and I feel like the leather is just a little more malleable um, at first. So, so that, that's just my, that. you know, like if I put on a pair of like the black tap shoes that they sell, the Miller and Ben black tap shoes they sell like at Broadway Dance Center or at, you know, certain little pop-up shops, uh, sometimes I find those to be a little harder to break in than getting this. So. If you have the extra money, I recommend getting the the royal treatment. <laughs> so actually, in addition to that, since you brought up black, and actually this came from the mouths of Avi and Oper, Avi Miller, Oprah Ben, um, they told me because they know I have all these foot problems since you know we know each other and are friends. And um, what they actually recommended to me, and so I'm going to tell you the same thing, is that sometimes their lighter colors are easier to break in than their darker colors. So if you're if you're a person who has foot problems and are worried about Miller and Benz because you've heard that they are hard to break in, I have two recommendations. The first one is to go a lighter color. And the second one is to either do a beaten leather or a goat leather. So the goat leather choices, which they say is GT in parentheses, are um, a different kind of leather. So GT stands for goat leather, just in case. I didn't know that until... I, I didn't I know that. that. Yeah. And um, so yeah, so GT leathers are a different leather and they're they're softer than the other leathers. And so if you are nervous about a break-in, I would say go light and go goat. And then that would be your best bet in terms of breaking in um, your first pair of Miller and Benz. Awesome. And then my second thing is, um, so if you personally, if your issue with breaking in shoes is that you get blisters on your ankles, then I would say sport tap over um, jazz tap because the jazz tap master is like normal and the sport tap is, is like cushioned right here. So if the heel or the ankle is like what bothers you when you break in a shoe, then I would say sport tap. But I also have something else, which is I have um, blisters on my pinky toes mm -hmm. and um, like a bunion on front. I'm so cute. I know I can't, I can't get over it. Okay. We're but completely transparent like here on community area of your feet, I actually then recommend jazz tap masters over sport taps because the way that the, like, they look like a race car. I wish I had some here to show you, but they have a, like a thicker, piece of leather like there's more layers of leather right over the pinky toe in a sport tap and so if something is going to bother me on a sport tap it's my pinky toes and if something is going to bother me in a jazz tap master it's my ankle so it depends on you which one but like i said I, these are my two favorite types like but of course a break-in process in a hard thick leather shoe is a break-in process and yep. so if you have like a preference that's how i would tell you to decide which type to try first that's awesome, Shelby. Yeah. Well, listen, um, uh, that's all we have time for, but this has been like, what? this has been the greatest half an hour of information. It's just, it's enlightening. You have 
you have so much insight into it. Um, you, you are, you know, you are using these products and, and, you know, so you're really getting a sense of what works for you and everybody is different, you know, and unfortunately we don't, we all don't have the money to buy a whole bunch of different shoes and try them, you know, and. No, absolutely. Um, and that's, that's why I started my tattoo reviews. Yeah. Is because, because I just feel like it's someone, people should have some information, especially if they can't try things on because they're not like in New York and have access to BDC or, you know, I just think that, the more information people can have from their homes, if they're going to order something online, the, the better, you know? Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much for being on today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I know everybody else who's watched has appreciated it. We're going to save this to IGTV so that more people can watch it afterwards. And you're welcome to share it as well. And um, yeah, and if, you, if anyone out there has any more questions, feel free to reach out to Common Ground Tap. And uh, hopefully we can help you get your floor and shoe situation going. Um, we're going to continue this community forum and do more talks like this. And certainly, uh, Shelby, you will be somebody that we definitely want to have back because you have a lot of great insights. So thank you for, for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I think this is great. I, I'm going to tune in and see what everyone else has to say about all these other uh, topics. I can't wait to be involved more. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to let you go. Happy New Year, everybody. And thanks for coming to see me. <laughs> thanks. Bye. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, that is it for our community forum. Uh, we will always be posting something on stories, uh, offering a chance for you to uh, send in questions so that we can have those to ask our guest before uh, the next forum. So keep an eye out on our page for that. And um, we are just starting to come up with some new concepts for this. So if you have something that you want to hear more about in regards to tap, whether it's tap history, tap, tap ap amplification, um, anything like that, uh, questions about Zoom, please feel free to send us a message and let us know. I am uh, have not uh, tapped him yet, but I'm hoping to reach out to DeWitt Fleming Jr., who uh, has, sells a product called um, Do It Right Tap Mics, and um, want to bring him on to talk about amplification and how to get uh, a good sound, both on stage and also when you're teaching online uh, for Zoom, our favorite thing to do. Uh, anyway, have a great day, everybody, and hope to see you next time, and hope to see you in class. This is Justin Besito from Common Ground. Have a good day.